go with forty dollars in my pocket. My son is now twelve. I'm still married, and I love my wife dearly. We had to make a living. I was younger than I am now, and thought I needed more. I didn't believe in prohibiting people from getting the things they wanted. I thought prohibition was an unjust law, and I still do. We had to However easy the Rizzutos made it look, the surveillance tapes reveal that a lot of their work is done by telephone. When you listen to the recordings, remember, they're not actors reading a script. They're real-life professional gangsters relying on a well-honed, time-honored technique, intimidation. Bro, you gotta give me money today. Today? Yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> Let me on, talk bro. to you. Where are you? Can I see you? The unlucky recipient of this call owes a gambling debt of $112,000. I'm not waiting after today. After today, my partner said he's going to come and he's going to break every limb in your body. I want 112,000 today. Come on. Okay? You serious, bro? We're going to come and get you in your fucking house. I don't give a fuck. I want 112 G's today, but bro, where we catch you, we're going to leave you. The Rizzuto's chief enforcer is Frank Del Balso. I want my fucking money today. Lorenzo said he's going to grab you. He's going to fucking turn you into a pretzel. And don't fuck with him, bro. I don't want to fuck with nobody, man. Listen to me. Go mm -hmm. get 112 dimes, and mm -hmm. you save yourself a fucking beating of your life. Offers hard to refuse aren't only for deadbeat gamblers. An overdue notice from a Rizzuto-connected company brings a customer service call like this. Yeah, uh, you know when you're going to pay the bill? Who are you? Hey? Who are you? The guy that's going to make you eat out of a straw for six months if you don't go pay him. I beg your pardon? You hear me? I know you have me on tape. Don't worry about it. Just go pay the bill, okay? And I'm not going to come and tell you again. I'm not in the mood for toys or games or kids. I'm not in the mood for clans. I'm not in the mood for gangs. I'm not in the mood for none of that stuff there. This is going to be a closing motion until I die. Be it an hour from now, be it tonight, or a hundred years from now, I'm in jail. It's going to be a closing motion. They're going to be much your friends are going to be friends of ours, but the same friends are going to be friends of ours. It's going to be the way I say it's going to be, and I was an Austrian. I was an Austrian. You might, because a guy is nice to you, and I'm not the problem with you. I'm just saying, you might be a guy who's your best, and he's a good guy. He makes him a motherfucker. I mean, I'm not a good guy. He makes him a good guy when he's one of us, and he proves he's one of us. And I'm the best judge of that, I think, right now. So, you got a reason why you say it. I love you to say it, and that's not the point. The hand that gives out money can also turn into an iron fist. In a previous trial, police played a tape of Gotti, which they say is the real voice of a real godfather. The man on the other end of the line hadn't returned Gotti's phone call. Listen, I can call you a in the house five times yesterday. Now, if you want to fix your husky, or she's a f***ing husky, and you're going to disregard my mother's phone calls, I'll call you in the house up. I never disregard anything you want. you call your wife up? What that is, is two old friends, one yelling at the other, losing his temper, which he does all the time. And now John Gotti is in jail again. And prosecutors say they have new and better tapes and more witnesses than ever before. Though everybody knows the record is on Gotti's side. This is our fourth case in five years. Uh, I'm confident we'll be vindicated when we go to trial. The stakes are very high. This is the case. The government has to win this case. But there has to be one image lurking in the back of every prosecutor's mind. We find him not guilty. Hey! After the last trial, when the alleged real-life godfather came out of the courtroom a free man, he turned and gave a salute to the cheering crowd. A salute that seemed to say, I'm back.